If you're already a plumber running your own business or just about to start and grow your own plumbing business, you must learn the four critical things plumbing business owners wish they had learned before starting their business so you don't make the same mistakes. Plumbing Accelerator has put together a free training video you can watch for free right now that will show you exactly how to start. Grow and build your plumbing business the right way so you can consistently guarantee profitable work and free up your time, all while reducing stress levels and allowing you to have sustainable and a more profitable business that works for you. In this free training video, you will also learn how to generate a steady stream of jobs on demand and with predictability month after month in your local area without relying on word of mouth and referrals how to stop competing on prices with other electricians and escape your competition, how to convert at least 90% of your quotes and estimates into sales, how to command premium prices and attract high quality customers that will be happy to pay more. Click on the link on the description below the video. Carpentry is one of the oldest professions born from a real need in terms of cover. Plumbing was born out of a need for convenience and hygiene. So which one should you choose when you need to make a career choice? We scoured the internet for facts regarding these two professions and found the information we needed. This video will inform you as to which decision to make. Each job has its glamour, but they also have their negative aspects. We looked for the full story. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. The History of Plumbing Plumbing originated during ancient civilizations as they developed public baths and needed to provide potable water and wastewater removal for larger numbers of people. The word plumber dates from the Roman Empire. The Latin name for lead is plumbum. Romans used lead in conduits and drain pipes and some roofs were also covered with lead. Lead was also used for piping and for making baths. Plumbing reached its early apex in ancient Rome, which saw the introduction of expansive systems of aqueducts, tile wastewater removal, and widespread use of lead pipes. With the fall of Rome, both water supply and sanitation stagnated, or regressed, for well over 1,000 years. Improvement was slow, with little effective progress made until the growth of modern densely populated cities in the 1800s. During this period, public health authorities began pressing for better waste disposal systems to be installed to prevent or control epidemics of disease. Earlier, the waste disposal system had consisted of collecting waste and dumping it on the ground or into a river. Eventually, the development of separate underground water and sewage systems eliminated open sewage ditches and cesspools. The use of lead for potable water declined sharply after World War II because of increased awareness of the dangers of lead poisoning. At this time, copper piping was introduced as a better and safer alternative to lead pipes. The History of Carpentry Wood is one of mankind's oldest building materials. The ability to shape wood improved with technological advances from the Stone Age to the Bronze Age to the Iron Age. Some of the oldest archaeological evidence of carpentry are water well casings. These include an oak and hazel structure dating from 5256 BC, found in Ostrov, Czech Republic, and one built using split oak timbers with mortise and tenon and notched corners excavated into eastern in Germany, dating from about 7,000 years ago in the early Neolithic period. Relatively little information about carpentry is available from prehistory, before written language, or even recent centuries before the knowledge and skills were passed down from person to person, rarely in writing. Until the printing press was invented in the 15th century and builders began regularly publishing guides and pattern books in the 18th and 19th centuries. The oldest surviving complete architectural text is Virtuvius 10 books collectively titled De Architectura, which discuss some carpentry. Some of the oldest surviving wooden buildings in the world are temples in China, such as the Nanshan Temple built in 782, the Greenstead Church, parts of which are from the 11th century, and the Stave Churches in Norway from the 12th and 13th centuries. Even today, carpenters are required to maintain these buildings. What does a plumber do? Plumbers install and repair pipes that supply water and gas to, as well as carry waste away from, homes and businesses. They also install plumbing fixtures such as bathtubs, sinks, toilets, and appliances, including dishwashers and washing machines. Experienced plumbers train apprentices and supervise helpers. They work alongside other construction workers. What does a carpenter do? Today, carpenters can work indoors and outdoors on many different types of construction projects. 
products, including everything from kitchen cabinets to bridges. They may use a variety of hand or power tools to cut and shape wood, plastic, fiberglass, drywall, and other substances. Carpenters then fasten these materials with nails, screws, staples, and adhesives. The result is something entirely new that is more useful than a piece of wood. Plumber duties and responsibilities. Plumbers must be able to perform the following tasks. Install pipes and plumbing fixtures. Visually inspect equipment and operate test equipment such as pressure and vacuum gauges to determine the cause and location of trouble. Clear obstructions from sink drains and toilets. Troubleshoot problems and decide how to fix them. Repair pipes and plumbing fixtures. Estimate cost of installations and repairs. Present recommendations and related pricing to customers. Plumbers must be capable of performing these tasks to ensure the proper functioning of properties plumbing systems. Carpenter duties and responsibilities. Carpenters can work in a range of different settings, but most jobs will include duties such as taking measurements, drawing up plans for proposed works, sourcing materials, preparing estimates, and undertaking site visits. Carpenters do a variety of different jobs, but some of their duties might include installing wooden structures such as roofing frames, rafters, partitions, joists, and stud work, designing and installing cabinets, shelving, fitted furniture, drywall, and insulation, adding fixtures and fittings such as door handles, locks, hinges, and closures, selecting lumber by size and strength to suit each job, sourcing wood to suit the customer's budget and style, calculating the number of fasteners required for each job, liaising with clients, suppliers, and other construction professionals, reading blueprints and designs to work to specifications prepared by other construction professionals, architects, and building code recommendations. Plumber's salary. Plumber's earnings vary based on their experience and location. They receive a median salary that is higher than that of other construction trade workers and other workers in general. Median annual salary is $53,910. Top 10% annual salary, $93,700. Bottom 10% annual salary, $32,100. Many plumbers belong to labor unions that negotiate wages on their behalf. Those that do must pay members membership fees. Carpenter salary. Carpenters in the United States make an average salary of $41,758 per year or $20.08 per hour. People on the lower end of the spectrum, the bottom 10% to be exact, make roughly $33,000 a year, while the top 10% makes $52,000. As most things go, location can be critical. New Jersey, Alaska, Washington, New York, and Connecticut provide the highest carpenter salaries. In other countries like the UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, the salaries are also very competitive. Plumbing education, training, and certification. Most plumbers receive their training by doing an apprenticeship, which combines classroom instruction with paid on the job training. Most states also require a license to work independently. Apprenticeship. Apprenticeships are sponsored by trade unions and employers. They last from four to five years and include 2,000 hours of on the job training and classroom instruction. You will need a high school or equivalency diploma and must be at least 18 years old to be accepted into a program. In the classroom, you will learn about local codes and regulations, blueprint readings, and safety. License. Plumbers are required to have a license to work in most states and municipalities in the U.S., in addition to needing two to five years of experience, depending on where the license is issued. You must also pass an exam according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Carpentry Education, Training and Certification Vocational schools and technical colleges offer certificate and associate degree programs in general carpentry or in different carpentry crafts. A technical college program uses classroom instructions to teach building codes and layout, construction drawings and blueprint readings, safety, math, and English. Hands-on practical application training covers framing and finishing techniques, as well as using measuring instruments, hand tools, and power tools to work with lumber and other building materials. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, employers are more likely to offer higher wages to graduates of formal vocational education programs. 
www.bls.gov. Carpentry students can also begin their training as a carpenter's helper, assisting skilled carpenters in order to master skills and craftsmanship through observation and practice. Trade unions and large general contractor firms frequently offer formal programs for carpentry apprenticeships, leading to certification as a journeyman carpenter. A formal apprenticeship may encompass up to four years and cover much of the same learning process as a vocational school. Apprenticeship programs include classroom instruction and on-the-job training. The curriculum can be developed by the master trade organization or through the use of a standardized trade-specific program. Plumbing work environment. Plumbers usually travel to different work sites each day, performing their jobs in homes, office buildings, and factories. They work in tight spaces, typically indoors, but some may work outside even in poor weather. Plumbers frequently sustain injuries, including burns, cuts, and falls. Approximately 13% of workers are self-employed. They can set their own schedules. Carpentry work environment. Carpenters may spend a significant amount of their day working both indoors and outdoors. They can work in a private home, business, school, healthcare facility, or an outdoor area. They may work in inclement weather and spend long hours outside. A carpenter can work part-time hours, but many of them work full-time schedules. They work during the day, but some employers may require them to work at night depending on the project. Carpenters can work during the weekday and on the weekends when their employer requests them to. Carpenters often have physically strenuous jobs and spend long periods on their feet. They may also climb, crawl, squat, and remain in small spaces for prolonged periods at a time. There you have the main reasons to join these two professions. Which one would you choose and why? Conversely, why would you not choose a specific one? Be sure to check back for more videos like this. Until then, stay safe.